Hello, I'm Joel Rutherford, and uh, this is the Muscle Shoals Career Academy, Career Academy Carpentry class. And today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, materials handling techniques that are used commonly in the construction industry. Um, these are just methods that are used to move objects and materials uh, around within a construction uh, site. So. Um, Stepping, stepping right on into this, um, I want to identify the objectives of this, uh, class, of this uh, lesson. And when you have completed this, you should be able to define what a load is. Uh, you should be able to establish a pre-task plan for moving a load. In other words, you should be able to look at a load before you start moving it and uh, identify some possible pitfalls or potential problems and just get a, a go through a thought process um, of how to move that material. Um, you're going to be able to use proper materials handling equipment for a task. And you should also be able to recognize and follow safety procedures uh, as they relate to materials handling. Okay, first of all, what is a load? A load is defined as a quantity of materials that are able to be carried or transported and relocated at one time, and this could be my machine, vehicle, uh, another type of piece of equipment, or even a person. So, a load is essentially the stuff that we're moving, okay? Um, it's not specific to how we're moving it, it's only related to what we are moving. Um, now, sometimes uh, we can be injured uh, if we're moving materials around, especially if we're moving them by person. Um, it, materials handling is a common task on construction sites, um, and it also leads to a lot of non-fatal injury, injuries, such as back injuries. Uh, you can tell uh, this little graphic here shows the right way and the wrong way to lift a box. Um, most of the time uh, injuries occur because somebody didn't use good judgment and good thought processes. So if we take our time and slow down and watch what we're doing, most of the time we're going to avoid any type of injuries. Now one of the most important things that you can do before moving the materials is establishing a pre-task plan. Um, and that is thinking about what you're going to do, uh, thinking about how you're going to do it, and just walking through the steps mentally before you actually uh, perform the steps physically. Um, now, on a, on a lot of construction sites and in a lot of plants, um, they may have a form that they require you to fill out uh, before moving certain types of materials. And this form is designed to help you walk through step by steps the process uh, that you'll be uh, carrying out when you move certain materials. So it's not just something you know that, that relates to this class, it's something that goes on in the real world. Now, uh, with regard to pre-test planning, um, before you move materials, always check to make sure that what you're uh, going to be moving is not too big to hold or too heavy, um, very important. Uh, make sure that the load does not have any protruding wires, nails, or sharp edges when you lift it because you wouldn't want to cut yourself. Um, make sure it's something that you can lift by yourself. If you can't lift it by yourself, clearly you need to get some help. Um, walk through your you're planning the path of travel. Uh, you can identify a lot of hazards um, just by walking through the, the, the path that you're going to be uh, traveling to move these materials. And always read the warning labels before you move things. Um, these can identify, help you identify potential dangers or hazards. Okay, PPE, always make sure you use the right, right personal protective equipment. Um, when you're moving things. Uh, this could be times, um, this could be gloves, it could be a back brace, um, you know, safety glasses, hard hat, that's always kind of goes without saying, but uh, 
Make sure that you've got the right PPE when you're moving these. You may have to have some non-slip uh, shoes on a particular site that you're, you're working on. You need to make sure you have those. Um, now, as you guys uh, enter into uh, the workforce, um, some of you will be on construction sites and you'll have a tool belt. Um, and young guys, uh, they don't like wearing that tool belt. The first thing they want to do, the first chance they get, the first minute that they can, they want to pull that tool belt off and lay it down. And just as, as a, a person that's moving into the industry, from a person who's been in the industry, I would encourage you to keep that tool belt on. Uh, you never know when someone's going to say, hey, you know, help me with this. And even though you may have been moving some materials around and not needed your tool belt at that moment, there you are, somebody's asked you to do something and you've got to go track down your tool apron and it just it kind of makes you look silly. So I would encourage you to uh, keep that on. Um, just a lot of different reasons for it. Okay. Before you lift an object, make sure you've got firm footing, bend your knees and get a good grip, and be sure to lift, lift with your legs. We don't want to lift with our back. So squat down, grab a hold of whatever you're going to be uh, lifting, and stand up using the leg muscles, because we all know that the leg muscles are much bigger and stronger than the back muscles, and they're not nearly as uh, likely to be injured if you use this technique. Um, there are times when you'll need to ask a coworker for help when you're moving uh, materials. If it's 50 or pounds or more, if it's 10 feet or longer, um, some objects that can be affected by wind gusts, like plywood, you would want to have uh, help with that. Um, and uh, remember too, that some, it's not always the weight of an object that uh, causes problems. Sometimes it's a configuration. I've seen young guys try to pick up eight or ten two by fours uh, at one time. And while they may be strong enough to do that, what happens is when they get halfway to where they're going, the two by fours sort of start to come apart and go in, in a multitude of directions and they lose control of the load. And it, it creates a possibility for injuries. Um, so never carry more uh, pieces than you can control. Um, now, there may be times uh, when you're lowering objects from overhead. Um, and if you were, I can get the first example that comes to mind is if you were employed at Lowe's and you were stacking the, uh, the materials up on the top of those shelves that they have. Um, remember, if you look up there and you're going to be uh, getting down a bundle of plywood or whatever it is, look at it. And if it looks like it was too heavy to be uh, raised up there by one person, it's probably too heavy to be lowered by one person. So again, we come back to thinking about what they're doing. <clears throat> um, if it's up too high, and it, it most likely get, was put up there by a forklift, probably need a forklift to put it down. You know, good question to ask yourself would be, how did it get up there? Uh, so always think about that type of things. And again, you want to use that uh, proper uh, techniques for lowering objects, which is the same uh, technique that you would use for uh, lifting. Um, now a lot of times, uh, if we look on our MSDS sheet, or there may be some packing instructions included with materials, we don't want to pack them, we don't want to stack them higher than what's listed on the instructions. Uh, stack everything neatly and sensibly. Um, you guys know in my class when we're stacking lumber, I'm constantly saying keep it nice and neat. And the reason for that is because, I know you've heard me say it a thousand times, if you take materials and you just store them in a haphazard manner, they'll get damaged, they may get warped, uh, a lot of different things can happen to them that probably won't happen to them if you stack them up nice and neatly. And the other thing is it just uh, creates a neat and order, orderly uh, work environment. 
So if, if you're keeping the work environment neat and orderly, uh, especially as a person just coming in to the construction industry, your supervisor is going to notice that and he's going to appreciate that and will help you in the long run. Um, flammables like gasoline, um, oil, they need to be uh, stored in a well ventilated area and the best case scenario is that they're stored in a fireproof container. The yellow cabinet that we have out here that we keep all of our paints and things in, that is a, that's a fireproof container. Um, when you're stacking bag material, concrete bags, this is uh, looks like wheat. Uh, notice how uh, the, the person that stacked these didn't lay all the bags in the same direction. Uh, when you lay them in the same direction, it makes a uh, unstable uh, stack. But if you alternate directions, like as in this picture, um, it, it's a, a much more stable uh, stacking configuration. Um, again, stacking uh, lumber neatly is very important. Uh, you know, you can see what a mess this looks like versus the the professionalism that is exhibited here. You know, if, if you're new in the construction industry or if you're new in your job, you want to be the guy that stacks his stuff up or girl that stacks his material and just does his job like this, neatly and orderly. You don't want to be the guy that's just got everything sort of uh, laying around haphazardly. <clears throat> um, anytime that you are storing pipes or round uh, materials, they got to be chocked. And by chocked, I mean just putting a, this is a chock right here, it's a wheel chock, and that's going to keep this, that's going to keep this piece of machinery from rolling, and uh, likewise with these pipes. So you want to make it chocked. And uh, a lot of times you'll hear me call it scotched off. That's just something I sort of picked up from, from my years in the construction industry. Um, <clears throat> in the construction industry, sometimes it's uh, necessary to work with cables. Um, here's some safety precautions that will come, uh, come in handy when you're working with cables. Um, reading and understanding the proper safety instructions for the pulley system before using. Uh, when you're pulling wire, now what I'm talking about when I say pull wire is uh, in a, an industrial uh, setting or really any construction type environment, most of the time wires are contained in what's called a conduit. And basically a conduit is just a pipe. And that protects that wire from being damaged, you know, by just whatever. Uh, sometimes you may have some very high voltages inside of, in these wires. So, you want to protect that so that it doesn't somehow um, come in contact with a person or with a piece of metal and end up hurting somebody. So that's why they're in conduit. And when you're pulling the wire into the conduit, it's not easy. Okay, it doesn't just slide in there nice and smooth. Um, and a lot of times you have to have what's called a tugger. And uh, I think there's a, a picture of a tugger uh, we'll look at here in a minute. But it's uh, just a machine that's designed to help you pull that wire uh, into a conduit. Um, a lot of times, though, you don't have a tugger. Um, in this case, you got to pull it with your own, your own tugger, your own muscles. And if you do that, make sure you spread your legs and make sure you got a good balanced stance um, and get a rope that uh, has a greater capacity for pulling than what you think you're actually pulling. And the deal with the rope is um, when you, what, what you do if you're pulling a, a, a run of wire into a conduit, you'll pull that rope in first and then tie the wire to the rope and pull the wire using the rope. So you would attach that to the wire and always make sure that that uh, rope has got a, a, a stronger capacity than what is actually needed for, this, for the pull. And here's the tugger. Um, and uh, it's you got you're supposed to use a low stretch rope for it. And what happens is is uh, the the rope is just pulled. A rope is twisted around this uh, cylinder right here, 
and it pulls the wire in for you. And um, there's a video uh, of the tow of the toger in action. And um, what I'll do on the website is I'll put a link to that uh, to that toger video. Okay. Here's a few types of uh, material handling devices that are used in construction. Uh, hand trucks, we're all familiar with those. Material carts, we have one out here somewhere. Roller skids, wheelbarrows, pipe mules, pipe transporters, jacks, and pallet jacks. Uh, so we've got some of these around here in the shop, but we don't have all of them. So we're going to talk a little bit about these individually as we go. Um, First of all, first before that, we'll talk about the safety guidelines. Um, always use the appropriate device for the job. Uh, again, it just goes back to using good judgment. 90% of the time, good judgment will keep you from getting hurt or uh, having an accident. Um, expect the device before using it. Make sure that all the parts are intact and working well. Um, if you are Moving any types of material around, for instance, on a, a, a cart or a pallet jack, um, you want to put your heaviest and largest uh, items on the bottom and the smaller stuff uh, on the top. Uh, <clears throat> maintain the safe speed. We don't go, want to go flying through there. Take your time and go slow. And don't stack high, items higher than your line of sight because you can't see where you're going. Okay, here is a platform truck. You want to make sure that the wheels are moving freely when you use it. Uh, the surface needs to have ad adequate contract traction. In other words, you wouldn't want your load sliding all over the platform of this truck. You want it to sit still while you're moving it. Um, and it may be that you need to tie or strap it down as you move. Um, make sure the load's centered and balanced. We don't want to put it out here on the very edge and take a chance on it. Flip it over or on one side, put it in the middle so it's balanced. Um, and always use extra caution when using these on an incline or decline surface. Um, and don't, don't let these carts pass their weight capacity. Very important. Okay, this is a picture of a hand truck. We've got one of these uh, in our shop and we use it from time to time for various things. Before we use it, inspect the frame, um, and when you use it, I, I wish I'd had it in here, hold the object against the frame as you tilt the car back. So um, that, that's something that, uh, that we probably need to train on in the shop just to show you all how that works. Okay, now this is a roller skid. Um, these are used for moving equipment. You can see uh, it's got a, a little plate here that the equipment sits on and down here we have rollers so most likely what you would have would be a series of these and um, you would you would put your equipment on several of them and we would move it through whatever area we're going through on the skids um, a lot of the this one here is equipped with a rotating table service and it. it's got spikes just like um, we're talking about here. Those spikes are there to give you a, a better grip, and, but some have a plain surface. So that, that kind of tells you a little bit about different types of uh, roller skids. Um, you would prefer to have the ones with the spikes on it to improve the grips, but you can't always have everything you want. Uh, this is an example of a pipe mule, and it's just a little cart. You put the pipe on it, and you can just balance it and, and roll it wherever you're going. Here's uh, These are bottle jacks. Uh, these can be dangerous, uh, but if they're used correctly, they're not. Um, they're used for you know lifting heavy objects. Uh, the force is applied with a hydraulic press. So um, what you do, if you've never seen one of those, this little thing right here on the right hand side This thing right here on the right hand side of the jack, um, you put a little pipe in there and you pump it up and down and that increases the hydraulic pressure and causes this piston to raise. This is a 50 ton jack, so it's pretty stout. Um, these are really common, you can get them at Walmart. Okay. 
uh, motorized material, materials handling, uh, forklift. I hope we can, can drive a forklift in here before the end of the year as part of our materials handling uh, exercise. We were able to do that last semester and it was, it was a good thing. Uh, now when you use these, you need to be trained, certified, and authorized. So you need to know how to do it, you need to have the right paper that says you know how to do it, and your boss needs to say it's okay. All right, this is an example of a powered wheelbarrow. That's pretty neat. I've never seen one like that other than in this picture. Okay, uh, an industrial forklift. These things come really big. You can see in this picture, we got one forklift picking up another one. Um, it's got a pronged flat platform. Everybody's seen forklifts. I'm not going to go into to great depth there. Um, these are typically used to lift, lower, and transport large or heavy loads that are on smooth terrain. Uh, this would be like a warehouse or maybe if you were on a new construction site uh, on the interior of a building where you have a slab board, kind of like what we're standing on now. Um, that, that's kind of what a forklift are. They don't work very well on uneven surfaces. There's another type of forklift that's called a lull that's used for those. Uh, here's somebody that's had an accident on one of those. So if you're ever working near a forklift, stay out of the fall zone. Uh, this, and the fall zone is the distance, the, the circular distance around the forklift that's twice the height of the object being lifted. So if we're lifting something up 10 feet tall, um, we need to stay 20 feet away from it in case it falls over and slides toward, for whatever reason, that's the safe distance, twice the fall zone. Um, hand signals. Now, hand signals are very important, um, and not a lot of people know these. Uh, if you're on a job uh, where there's a, a large crane uh, being operated, the people that are signaling that crane operator are supposed to know the right hand signals. You know, um, there's no there, there's no substitute for that. <clears throat> and the person that is signaling to the crane operator always needs to maintain eye contact with that person. So, very important. Very much. Uh, I appreciate it.